this video we looked at how to write assignments there are two assignments set for this module um, which are aimed in providing you with the opportunity to dom demonstrate your understanding of the work all assignments can be found in tutorial letter 101 feedback on your assignments will be posted in tutorial letter 201 and 202 a few days after each assignment is due check your answer against the explanations given in the tutorial letters um, if you have the incorrect answer, you have to take this as a valuable learning opportunity to see what you did wrong and what the correct answer is and how to better prepare for the exam. So let's look at how to answer assignment questions. First, you have to read the question. Make, you, make sure you understand what is asked. Uh, so this question says, briefly explain environmental problems that can be associated with economic growth. Read it a couple of times, make sure you understand it, and then go to your MO document in your textbook. Find the answer and read it a couple of times. If you do not understand the explanation, ask your lecturer or your e-tutor. Do not use another source, for instance the internet. I see a lot of students that just type in the keywords of the question into Google and then just copy and paste the first um, option that pops up and this is mostly the information is incorrect and you get zero so do not use the internet there's too much information and you'll probably use irrelevant things that would only be incorrect stay with your textbook and your MO document so when you're sure you understand it hundred percent you can move on to the next step the third step is to close your book and start writing your answer and the reason why you should close your book is because you need to write your own words do not write from the textbook word for word that's plagiarism and you will get zero make sure to watch the video on plagiarism and referencing it takes a lot of practice to be a good writer so make sure you structure your answer well so start with a small introduction for example if the question is the following briefly explain environmental problems that can be associated with economic growth you want to write an introduction that kind of mirrors the question. So you will write something like That's a good introduction. Then you can start with the body of your assignment, of, of your answer. So this, again, in your own word, is the bulk of your answer. Always write in essay format. Never use bullet forms. You will be penalized if you use bullet points. For example, write it in an essay format as, as follows. Um, start with your argument. Uh, write in paragraphs. Show that, for instance, in this case, mining activity will cause a negative impact on the environment. Give another example. For instance, forest and fishery. If we extract too much, we will damage the environment, although it would be good for the economy. And then I give another two points of how when we get richer, we consume more, and that's also bad for the environment. Um, so we want to write a substantial amount in the body of your argument because you have to get at least 10 marks here, so make sure you, you write enough. Do not uh, say things more than once. Uh, say to the point and, and then but make sure you say enough and lastly write small conclusion the conclusion should not be more than two sentences um, and this will just summarize the answer and there's my conclusion make sure you type um, only little more than half a page for a 10 mark question so uh, do not write more than that if you write your assignment with the hand, do not write more than a full page for a 10 mark question. And in the exam, you'll only get a one page for a 10 mark question. Check your work for spelling errors uh, by making use of a dictionary. Start the sentence with a capital letter and end it with a full stop. And please write neatly. And if you type, also make sure it's neat. Make sure everything is the same font. Make sure it's the same size all the way through and then also make use of this button over here, uh, which is justify to make sure that it's in a nice even block. 
Uh, the go golden rule is re-read everything you wrote a couple of times. Read it out loud and then ask yourself the one crucial question. Would my friend, who never had economics, understand my explanation? So the idea is that the, that the answer should be written in such a way that you would explain it to a non-economic student sufficiently. Okay, right. Next question is, when they ask you to draw a graph, you should use the same steps. First of all, read and reread the question. So let's, let's go to, to a question where they ask you to draw a graph. When they ask you to draw a graph, you should use the same steps. First, you read and you reread the question until you understand exactly what they want from you. Secondly, you go to your MO document in your textbook, not Google. You find the answer. Read and reread the answer in your textbook and MO document until you understand it. Then close your book and start writing by using your own words. Start with an introduction that mirrors the question. So if here I would write an introduction similar to the following. This introduction um, tells me something about the question as well. Okay, then draw the graph. Now, very important, always draw your own graph. Students who photocopy from the textbook get zero. I, I won't mark graphs photocopied from the textbook. Only draw graphs on a computer if you're able to draw it neatly. If you're unable to draw it electronically, draw it neatly and clearly on a paper. Scan it in or take a photo with it with your smartphone and put it into your assignment. So I'm going to write with this electronic pen. First of all, I'm just going to, uh, it's very important that you write it very neatly, even much more neat than this. So name your axis, write zero at the origin, Okay, so very important to label your axis clearly, label your all the, all the curves in your graph and uh, do everything very neatly. After you've drawn the graph, uh, remember only drawing a graph and not explaining it is poor economics. Economists always use a graph to explain something. So not discussing the graph and explaining what it means defeats the purpose. So always include the discussion underneath the graph and explain the curves, um, explain the markings in the discussion. All right, so I'm going to discuss it now. When discussing a graph, you start off with explaining what the axes are and what the curves are. So, for instance, there we go. I've explained what the axes and the curves are. Next step, is to explain any changes. So I've explained, um, I also just want to show above here that I forgot to draw an arrow to show it moves down. So this, this type of change, like moving down, you have to explain now. Right, and then lastly, you have to say what this means for the graph. So I'm just going to say what the result is. And then obviously you can also end with the conclusion just again taking summarizing the whole thing okay and there's a small conclusion students are allowed and even encouraged to ask other students questions and discuss the work however you're not allowed to copy another student's work in that case both students will receive, receive zero so just to sum everything up read and reread the question Find the answer in the MO document and textbook. Do not use the internet. Read and reread the textbook until you understand the answer. Close the textbook and start writing in your own words. Otherwise, you'll get zero. If you copy from the textbook word for word, you are plagiarizing and you will get zero. Make sure you watch the video on plagiarism and how to reference. Then write in essay format and not in bullet points. Write an introduction that mirrors the question. Write your answer in the body of the essay and conclude with one or two sentences. If the question asks you to draw a graph, you still need to start with the introduction.
then draw your graph. If you photocopy from the textbook, you will get zero. Draw your own graph and draw it neatly. If you're unable to draw it on a computer, computer neatly, then draw it on a paper and scan it in or take a photo with your smartphone and insert it into your assignment. Read and reread your answer and make sure it's perfect. Use a dictionary to correct spelling mistakes and make sure it's neat. Make sure you submit your assignments on time. Since due dates are communicated well in advance in this in, in tutorial letter 101, no late assignments will be considered. Assignments may be submitted by posting them, placing them at the UNISA assignment boxes located countrywide or online via my UNISA. If you submit your assignments online, please ensure that it's in PDF format. Make sure that the file is not secured or locked and not in a zip file. Assignments that were submitted as a hard copy will be marked and returned to the student. Please note that your posting your assignments is not advisable, as it may be delayed and not reach INISA in time. Instead of posting your assignments, you could rather deliver it at the nearest PEP store, where it will be collected and delivered to INISA by courier services at no cost to you. Assignments should reach Pretoria campus on the due date. If you submit your assignment in the my UNISA assignment boxes, you should do it at least two days before the due date. If you submit online, you can submit until midnight. I even make provision for delays because the system can get very busy on due dates. Good luck.